Let's have an exclusive with the steering committee chairperson of Star Ghana, Dr. Esther Odura uh, of Fair Abuaji, whose birthday was last Friday. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and she's joined us here. Happy Mother's Day. Happy birthday belated to you. Thank Doc, you. how are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you very how, much. How is your work as a steering committee chair? Is it difficult? It is demanding. Mm. It's demanding because there are people who have vested trust in you people who expect you to be able to look after the interests of the people of Ghana. Right. And that, for me, is an onerous responsibility. Mm. Because you have to be able to give of your best. You right. have to be able to be accountable to mm. them. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to demonstrate that you've put their best interests forward. Right. And so the steering committee in Star Ghana, too, mm. has a more engaged um, role right uh, we have to scrutinize every document every agreement mm. every call right and every proposal mm. with greater diligence mm. we have to be able to see how we are carrying the legacy of star forward right so that we can say to ourselves and to the people of ghana mm. that we've given it our all mm. so it's a responsibility we do not take lightly mm. And the kinds of people who are on the steering committee are people who have given a lot to Ghana okay. and are still interested in giving a lot to Ghana. Mm. Your, your, your chair committee of 11, two parliamentarians, six prominent Ghanaians, uh, civil society has two reps. You have one from the private sector. You have uh, a rep from the funders committee. They come to the table with diverse experiences and all of that expectations. How do you manage that? How do you captain that ship? <laughs> it's a very, very, very uh, good question you mm. ask. And I came to this position with enormous trepidation and uh, concern. I see. Um, I took over from no, um, me, no, uh, no less a person than Professor Akela Kwasoya. And All those right. are enormous shoes to exactly. fill. Exactly. And um, like you said, uh, these are very distinguished people mm. with uh, lots of mileage so they have to be treated with respect right. and they have to be treated with um, regard and accommodation because they are also very busy people right. but they do make time to do this work mm. so that you realize that they've come with enormous mm. sacrifice okay. you know for bringing this um, to the table mm. Um, I don't know if you know who they are. No, you tell me. I uh, should. Eh? Okay. As well. Right. So we have people like Professor Audrey Gajeko right. on it. School of Communications. Studies. Yes, mm. indeed. We have lawyer Akutam Pao right. on it. That's mm. right. Mm. We also have Professor Agnes Apusiga, UDS. Right. Yes. right. Mm. We also have Mrs. Adelaide Ado Fenning on okay. it. Okay. Um, in Parliament, we have. Um, the Honorable Member for Whole West, okay. um, Kosi Bejra. Right. I think uh, you remember him from um, chairing government assurances. Absolutely. And then uh, we also have, uh, from the NGO front, we have um, Francis uh, from Voice Ghana. Okay. We have Peter Yaro. He's representing the strategic NGOs, the big NGOs. Okay. I think he comes from uh, basic needs. Right. So uh, these are some of the people on steering okay. committee. Mm. The funders committee is represented by Diffid, uh, Nick Lee. Okay. So I mean, with a few members I've mentioned, mm. I mean, you 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 can see the mm. caliber, the of caliber, people. the yes, wealth of experience. That the wealth brings. of experience. What has been your assessment of Star Ghana too? Uh, so you give out cash, you give uh, specifics for media organizations and other partners too. To handle mm. have you been satisfied with it what's, what's your assessment so far star Ghana too we think has done a lot of very hard work mm. star Ghana two is different from star Ghana one in that mm. uh, we have elaborated the kind of support that we give to Ghanaian civil society mm. in the sense that beyond grant making we also provide technical support to CSOs and NGOs that require it. Okay. We also encourage um, learning okay. as part of our approach. Mm. Indeed, we call our approach the three C's and L right. approach. Mm. The three C's are convening, mm. catalyzing, mm. and coordinating. Okay. Now, the L is the learning. 
Mm. So I think TV3 was part or it's, it's a media partner right. of ours. Absolutely. So recently we were involved in what we call the Jesse Learning. We put out a call for gender equality and social inclusion so that okay. parties that have been involved in it mm. we get together, share experiences, learn okay. and put the lessons in the public domain mm. so that we don't continue reinventing the wheel right. and where advocacy has been initiated we build up on it to have a stronger mm. voice. So there is that dimension of it beyond the grant making and the technical support as is provided. Okay. We also provide opportunities for networking. Right. That's what we call, you know, the convening. We bring people around mm. to, we convene, mm. provide a platform for people to talk about topical issues. Okay. Um, anybody or any entity that has issues worth um, discussing, mm. uh, we lend our support to it. For instance, mm. the discussions around Galamse and so on, right. we were critical in helping to galvanize mm. it. And then we coordinate in the sense that if uh, TV3 is doing something wonderful mm. and um, other media partners or other entities could pick up from it, right. uh, we pull these like-minded entities together mm -hmm. and keep that um, that discussion going. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, we want to be able to sustain the gains of uh, Star 1 and Star 2. Right. And therefore, we're hoping to have the Star entity transit into a Ghanaian mm -hmm. um, set up a okay. Ghanaian entity okay. more in the line of a public trust mm. but our consultations are almost done and we've done all of the leg work we okay. are putting in the mechanisms and right. structures mm. to sustain the efforts interesting so parliament is, is on the uh, committee yes uh, because they're able to do uh, if you will a key accountability institution which they are yes I in terms of star Ghana 2 TV3 has done a lot of stories about education and health, particularly in the, in the North. Uh, what has Parliament's role been in trying to fix these problems that are highlighted by TV3's report? Very good. Mm. Parliament is a key partner of ours. Um, we work with uh, the leadership of Parliament. But we also work with four committees of parliament. Okay. We're exploring opportunities to do further work with parliament. Right. But the four committees include the education committee, the right. health committee, mm. the local government committee, mm. and the gender, uh, gender, children, children, children gender, women and children's children, committee. Right. Yes. Um, because of that, this year the approach we have adopted is I want to be able to provide opportunities for our media and CSO partners right. to convene with Parliament, the Parliamentary Select Committees mm. on the issues that um, have been identified right. uh, to be able to move Parliament forward on that. Mm -hmm. Now, our Select Committees recognize that they can't be on the ground all the time right. and mm. it's more efficient to pick up what civil society has identified and um, has uh, picked up on to run with it, okay. to do the necessary uh, background assessments, right. mm. to do the relevant advocacy with their colleagues, mm. to follow up with uh, governmental agencies, especially as part of their budget oversight, to examine how these issues have been taken account of. Mm. And if indeed these entities, duty bearers, do not have access to that information, then parliament, the parliamentary committees will facilitate mm. access right. to what their CSO partners mm. have done. Mm. But prior to coming to this position, you, I mean, you come with a great wealth of experience from the local governance institute, uh, GIMPA, and all of that. Yeah. Uh, one of the arms is also to ensure that we have decentralization because That's right. at the base we'll have the DCs, the MCs, everybody else. W from where you sit, mm. what do you see to be uh, the big challenge why we keep TV3 keeps highlighting some of the problems that we see it's a very important question mm. um, just veering off your question a bit um, Star Ghana is going to launch a local governance call right uh, later this year okay um, that way we will be able to identify some of the micro level as well as macro level um, issues around decentralization. Okay. Um, TV3's Mission Ghana has done a lot of work, particularly in the area of rural education mm. and the health stream, right. as mm. you, 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 you rightly mm. put it. Mm. Part 
part of the issue or part of the problem okay. is the our our ability as a nation to decentralize properly okay. and to equip the local authorities to deliver on public services. Why, Why is that so? Um, well, because we haven't been able to integrate basic services delivery into local governance effectively. Okay. Uh, we've held onto it at the center in the name of standards, mm. in the name of um, resources, mm and uh, in the name of lack of capacity right. at the local level. Mm. But one famous gentleman said to me that if it were an issue of capacity, mm -hmm. half the countries in Africa wouldn't have gotten independence. Right. So that we have to start somewhere. Mm. Education decentralization must take root. Mm. It's about providing solid, good, high quality, basic education. Right. Um, looking at uh, providing primary health care that is responsive to and responsible to mm. the citizenry at the local level is also essential. Mm. We have to marshal all the political will that we have to push these programs through mm. because it's about the citizenry right. and education and health and other basic um, services are interlinked. We right. are mutually reinforcing Absolutely. and we need to be able to um, evolve solutions mm. that respond to the local circumstances, mm. as well as pull on the local resources, mm. involving parents at the local level. It's mm. their choice. So, so you're, you're solving the problems. Yes. Uh, initiatives are being run, and the problems right. keep multiplying. Does yes. it break your heart? What burden does it put on you as chairman of the steering committee, Star Ghana? Uh, the major burden it puts on my heart mm. is that there is so much still left to do. Right. So much still left to do. For instance, if you live in Accra, around the Dansman area, you right. go to Glyphe, mm. you go to um, the base, right. uh, those areas, mm. Mpwase area, and you look at the children there and you say, these are Ghanaian children with the same rights as my children. Right. That means that there's still a lot of work, a lot to, of work do. to be done. And it appears we are not talking to each other enough. We are not coordinating efforts enough. Mm. Where something good has been done, it remains an island of excellence. Right. We are not upscaling pilots. We are not sustaining the efforts that we've begun. <sighs> and some of these things bother me. Agreeably. Finally, how, how have you seen the work of TV3 in Star Ghana? I am so proud of TV3 as a media partner. I mean, the work that they've done, and like I was telling you earlier, right. the education stream has really impressed me. Right. They've gone down to the ground, they've unearthed issues, the pictures are so poignant, they bring the issues um, to your doorstep. You are in that classroom with those children, or that lack of classroom right. with those mm. children. Mm. And we are enormously proud with the advocacy effort that you've done. Dr. Esther Odura Abwaji, I thank you very much. And I wish you all the best you as you move on. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of you.